Hi again then guys and welcome to another sports car review in the world of Gran Turismo and for this episode we are once again returning to the old days of the franchise to Gran Turismo 2 for another, I would say, unicorn car to some degree, both in the game and in real life. This is one of the only, if not the only, Gran Turismo game to feature the car, the Subaru SVX. It also has a longer name, named after a star, one of the stars in the Subaru logo, I believe the name is Alcyone, I think that's how it was pronounced, but not exactly a memorable name for most people. It's probably one of the reasons why the car wasn't exactly remembered that much. They didn't make all that many of these, it had a boxer engine, as you'd safely assume a Subaru would. It's all-wheel drive, or at least this version of it is, and it's actually got some pretty good specs. Now the price on Gran Turismo 2, if I remember correctly, was around 20 grand from the used car dealer. That isn't an exact price, of course, but it was somewhere around there. And I think, if I remember correctly, there may have been more than one version of this car on the game. So, for those who are perhaps unfamiliar with the Subaru SVX, or just haven't driven it on Gran Turismo 2, what can you actually expect from this car? Because when you think of performance Subarus, most people's minds would probably go to the Impreza. Of course, that's their flagship. In more modern times, you'd probably think of the BRZ, that's a legitimate option, and perhaps some people's minds might go to the Legacy. There have been some great performance versions of the Subaru Legacy. Not many people would probably think of this one first, though, but the actual fact is, this is one of the very few cars which Subaru has made which could genuinely be called a sports coupe, because although there are coupe variants of the Impreza, it's first and foremost a sedan, and then a coupe or a wagon. But it's the sedan that that's where it's at, really, when, when it comes to the Impreza. It's the most popular version, for obvious reasons. This one, though, is a full-on, pure 2 plus 2 sports coupe. Now, this car, and maybe this is just me, has always reminded me of a Saab. I don't know why, I don't think it has anything to do with Saab, but again, I could be wrong. I haven't thoroughly researched the background of the car, but to me, it's always looked like one. The way it has those Zagato style small side windows, the very narrow front end, even the grille and the lights remind me a lot of a Saab. And also, the way that the whole car tapers from back to front, kind of in a wedge shape, which again is something that Saab will sometimes do. So, maybe it's just me, but to me, it's always looked like it should be a Saab to me rather than a Subaru. But, Funnily enough, and maybe this is coincidence, Subaru and Saab have actually worked together on at least one car in the past, and that is a car which I'm going to talk about on the channel before too long, but that's for another time. Now this car is decent, I would say, as far as performance goes on Gran Turismo 2. It's not a monster, it's not mind-blowing, but it's pretty good. The engine is a boxer unit, like the Impreza, a 3.3 litre. It's naturally aspirated, you cannot turbo or supercharge it, which is a little bit unfortunate, but at the same time, you are looking at fully tuned numbers of 383 horsepower and 320 pound-feet of torque. So it's not exactly lacking. That would make it a pretty decent rival if it were on newer Gran Turismo games to stuff like, let's say, a Fair Lady Z, for instance, or a Sylvia, perhaps. Not a fully tuned one, of course, but it's that kind of region, or a Hyundai Genesis. It could give cars like that a decent run for their money, or even something like a Hyundai Coupe. Now, as far as weight, it's not as good. Now, it is all-wheel drive, and it's a reasonably well-equipped car. It's not a track day special by any means, so the weight isn't too surprising that it is high. It weighs 1,415 kilos in road form after fully upgrading the weight, or downgrading the weight, whichever way you want to look at it. And then if you race convert the car, which we will also feature in this video, some footage of that one, it weighs 1,358 kilos. So it drops it by a decent amount, about 50, 55-ish kilos, that kind of region. Now the horsepower per ton isn't fantastic, 271 in road form, 282 in race conversion form. So again, as I said earlier, it's not a mind-blowing car by any means. It's a good sports coupe. But that's pretty much where it ends, as far as the numbers go. So, of course, the question is, around the track, is this one of those cars that can go beyond the numbers that it's given, or is it just as good as you might expect it to be? Because, after all, it is an all-wheel drive Subaru sports coupe. 
And when it comes to making vehicles like that, Subaru has a pretty good track record. Just think of the 22B. That car is an absolute monster, and it's also an all-wheel drive boxer coupe. So the bar is certainly there for this one to have potential, at the very least. Well, to some degree, I would say this is a decent car, once again, but it's certainly no Impreza. It doesn't even come close. For performance, it might be as good as some of the legacies, but even then I think it might struggle, because although it has an interesting option of an engine, which in real life would be a pretty cool one, that bigger capacity naturally aspirated boxer, which is a relatively rare thing to have, in the game it just feels like untapped potential, given that the Impreza's engine can be tuned to quite, well, quite a high level in comparison to this. Overall, this isn't a bad car, certainly not. The handling isn't great, I will say. There's a little bit of understeer to the all-wheel drive, a little bit front heavy in that regard, and you can adjust that, of course, with the diff, and especially with the downforce of the race conversion. But overall, this is more a car that I would say is not necessarily a must-buy on Gran Turismo 2. It is certainly a highlight. It is one to check out but more so for people who just want to try something that's super obscure, kind of like a real-world unicorn car. Subaru didn't make all that many of them. Or, if you are specifically a Subaru fan, and you want to drive some of the cars that are no longer available in Gran Turismo. Overall, I would much rather have this version, though, than multiple different unnecessary Impreza's. It would have been much cooler to still have this car up until, say, Gran Turismo 6. Unfortunately, that's not the way it panned out, so if you want to drive the car, you've got to go all the way back to Gran Turismo 2. But, overall, that's it for this particular review. I'll see you guys next time, and as always, thanks for watching.